Fasten up your seatbelt because we're going to be looking at Google Docs. <laughs> It'll be fun today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? I like spending time by the lake. This could be fun. Today we're going to be talking about Google's free online word processor, which is part of the Google Drive suite of tools that we all have as a part of our Google account. And of course, Docs is the word processor uh, that Google gives us for free. And I've been using Docs for quite a long time now. And, and as I think back, I kind of took a walk down memory lane preparing for this demo as I was thinking about all of the word processors that I have had relationships with over the years. And it is quite a litany of, of former word processors that I've used. Going back, the first one I used, I think, was on a VIC-20. I can't even remember the name of it or if it had a name. Uh, the first one that I really remember using a lot was the venerable Mac Write, which I used on my old Mac Plus. Then we graduated to some Microsoft product like Microsoft Works. Remember their, their suite of tools, uh, eventually moving to Microsoft Word, WordPerfect, Scrivener. I've used so many different word processors. But today, often, I don't use a word processor anymore. We tend to use them a lot less now that we live in an online world because we're publishing less in paper. We're publishing more online. So typically speaking, we often just work in whatever, whatever site we're in. If we're in Facebook, you just compose whatever you're writing in Facebook or whatever social platform you happen to be in. Or I might be using Evernote or even Google Keep to write quick little notes and, and that sort of stuff. But word processors still have a place and Google Docs is, I think, a great choice uh, for a lot of different types of writing. So let's take a look at it. Let's dive in and let's look at the good and let's look at the bad of Google Docs. Now, as it's part of the Google suite of tools, we can get to it right from our Google menu. Uh, we go into Google Drive, which is, of course, the repository for all of our different applications in the Google ecosphere. And here I've got a uh, kind of a roster or a, a, a all my different files listed out. And I go to New to create a new Google Doc. Now, of course, we can create our other types of documents here as well, like spreadsheets and slideshows and many more that Google give us access to as a part of their suite of tools. But when we go to launch, and when, to launch, <laughs> when we go to launch a, and create a new document, we can either create a blank document or we can work from a template. And they're constantly evolving these templates, the different templates that we have. But if you're creating a resume or a sales sheet or what else do we got here? We've got a a pet resume. Well, that's an interesting choice. Or a project proposal, or meeting notes, or newsletters. If you're still printing off a newsletter or sales letters, or any of that sort of stuff. They've got all sorts of templates here that you can use if you're not particularly creative and you want to have this sort of page layout available to you. But you know, even having these documents available to you for page layout, I still don't always find Google Docs to be the best choice if my final goal for what I'm creating is paper. That's the one time I still use Microsoft Word. Now this might be just me, but I find that, the, uh, uh, that Google Docs don't print as predictably for me as does say Microsoft Word still. Uh, and, and I don't know if you have the same problem. I don't know if you have the same issue when you're printing uh, from Google Docs, but any documents that I'm creating for an online presence, I'm happy, more than happy to write in Google Docs. So there's that kind of one caveat that I will give you. Let's head back and let's actually create a document from a, from a blank document instead of one of their templates. And let's go start, start from blank document just the way I like. All right. So Google Docs is kind of grown into a hybrid. It's kind of, it lives a little bit in the application world and a little bit in the online world. Uh, so it, it, it's got kind of the menuing system that we would expect to find in a dedicated application because it's got all these dedicated processes that it has, but it's still very much a web application. It's, it's, not a, it's not an entrenched application that you that's an executable in itself. Uh, as we go through the menus for any Word, anybody who's used a word processor before is going to recognize most of the features built in. Now, as you create a document, yeah, of course, you can just be writing away. It's got built-in spell and grammar checking and all those sorts of features that you we, we've come to expect in the online space. We've got the formatting bar here, which allows us to quickly format uh, our document any way that we choose. Uh, but it's also got... Remember I said it's kind of lives partially in the world of application and partially in the web world. It's also got 
web designations for, for, for HTML designations to create headings and subtitles and, and all of our different uh, web-based assignments that we give to text to help us format and resolve web pages properly. So this is where it kind of crosses over into those two spaces. That's typically a menu you wouldn't expect to find in a normal executable word processor that's designed for paper, for example. Uh, but it's got some other nice features like format painting, which allows you to grab a format quickly and paint it onto a over a top of a new document, which helps you with formatting documents, etc. But the things that I want to show you right now are the is the insert menu to start because this shows us a little bit of the integration that it has with the other apps that are part of the Google uh, of Google Drive. So, for example, if we want to incorporate an image. You can, of course, copy and paste an image in, or you can import one from your computer, but you can also go directly to your Google Photos library. And then it pops here in the side, and you can select any photo from Google Photos. Let's pick this nice picture, Farley, and just drop it in. And there we can bring in a photo right from our Google Photos library, and that integration is really nice. And we see this integration extend into Google Sheets for spreadsheets and for, doing, for adding other assets to a document that we're creating. In Google, in, in Google Docs. So the insert menu is something which, uh, you know, if you're poking around, you should certainly take a look at. Now, it's got another feature here, which I'm, I'm intimidated to show you, but it's got an equation editor. One of the things that Google's really done well with these apps is they're great for teachers and they're great in, a, in an education environment. And they've got this equation editor, which if I was to try and use, I would just show you how little I know about math. But that sort of sophistication and the addition of those sorts of capabilities makes it far more valuable than probably readily meets the eye. You can also do long document processing, putting in page headers and numbers. Uh, you can even create tables of contents, et cetera, all within, uh, within Google Docs right here. Uh, formatting menu, as you'd expect, you know, setting text and formatting styles, et cetera. In the tools area, it gets kind of interesting. There's some additional features here. One of the ones that I appreciate is always, of course, the word count, which keeps me on track, especially when I'm writing articles for other people. But the voice typing is one that I use an increasing number of times as we go along. Now, th this is a dictation tool, which allows you to dictate, but it's not dependent on Apple's operating system. I'm on a Mac here, uh, but it's not operating system dependent, but it's built into the Google suite of tools. So if we go and if we turn that on, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how well the voice typing, I don't know why they call it voice typing instead of dictation, but the voice typing works. I have turned on the dictation and now I'm able to just dictate my text instead of typing it out. Now it does take a slightly different skill set to dictate a document as opposed to typing. We think differently when we're speaking as opposed to writing, but if you master the art of dictation, you can dramatically, I think, comma, improve your quality, question mark, or at least speed of work, period, exclamation mark, open quote, wow, close quote. Okay, it missed the open quote, close quote thing. Not too sure what happened there. But you get the idea. I've turned it off now. There we go. So I think that's pretty spectacular, being able to dictate a document into a word processor this way. And it's something that I use a lot now. I find that my fingers, I, I'm not just, I, I make a lot more mistakes now than I used to make. I, I'm sure it's the new keyboards the modern keyboards. That's probably the reason there. Another thing that they've got, of course, because we tie in with all of Google stuff, is Google stuff, <laughs> Google's features, is the ability to instantly translate the document into another language. Let's take this and let's convert it into Danish. Translate. Boom. Farley's a Danish dog, just like that. <laughs> now, it's not a thousand percent accurate, but it's pretty good. And so those features built in with Google Docs, and you may find them incredibly useful. Now, this next thing is something that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you, the add-ons. Google has, just like we have browser extensions in, in, that, that extend the functionality of our browser, they've got extensions for the different Google Drive applications. And if we go and we take a look at the sort of add-ons they have, this extends what the word processor does, or what any of our different Google apps will do 
quite dramatically, doing things like creating uh, authorized signature, illegal signature files, chart tools. Now, some of these are free. Some of them you have to pay for, clip art tools, a, 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 lab, a label merging tool from Avery. Now here, I do have concerns with a tool like that. I'm sure it works great, but the issues that I have with printing and all the, and, and most of the issues that I have, frankly have with printing come down to pagination and margins when I'm, when I'm printing. So I'm, I'm quite concerned that a tool like that would work, but I think it would be well worth trying out. Uh, going through, just, uh, you're probably gonna wanna scroll through this yourself because there are so many uh, different uh, add-on tools that you may well be able to take advantage of. Again, we see lots of stuff for teachers, a rubric program uh, for the word processor, lots of different tools for the education community. They, uh, they really support that well. And the education community in turn really supports the, 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 the Google Drive community as well. Isn't that cool? Lots and lots of different ways to extend what Google Drive does. But this brings us to what I think is the absolute best feature of Google Drive. Of, well, Google Drive overall, but Google Docs specifically. When I use a, a word processor and I'm actually working on a longer document right now, seldom am I writing a document by myself. I'm usually working with a team now on, a, on the document. So being able to work in a collaborative document is increasingly important. And Google does a spectacular job of allowing us to do collaborative work on documents. So here we see an example of Sophia and I editing a document together. Sophia is our copywriter, and so this is typically how it works. And the beautiful thing about this is it's real time. I can see Sophia making changes to the document in real time as I'm making changes. And you can add comments, you can accept changes. We work far more effectively and create better copy using the collaborative tools that are built into Google Drive than we were ever able to do before. This, to me, is one of the real spectacular features. So it doesn't matter if you're a parent helping a kid with an essay or you're collaborating on a document with a coworker. This, the ability to be able to easily share your document and collaborate and work with others is, I think, probably, it's probably the, the most spectacular feature that they've got in Google Docs. Other than the fact, of course, that it's free. We used to have to pay so much for these features, but no, it is absolutely free. Uh, that, that's really it. I think we've given you a really good idea. The strengths of Google Docs are definitely the collaboration with others and the integration with the rest of the Google suite of tools. The weaknesses really come down to printing and some of the really more sophisticated word processing layout aspects. If you are looking to print to paper, Google Docs probably, Google Docs is probably not your best bet, but if you're creating content for online delivery, as most of us are doing, I think that it really doesn't take a backseat to any other form of writing. That's all the time we have for today. Before I go, a favor to ask. If you found this video to be valuable, sharing it and liking it is greatly appreciated by us. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.